How about this? The Disturbing Cult of Looks Maxing by Cole Hastings. How attractive is Cole Hastings? Cole has unbalanced facial thirds. Have you guys seen these videos? The green line physiognomy black pill analysis videos. It's so over for you, bro, type shit. Suboptimal pupillary distance. Brown colored round eyes with positively tilted eyebrows. <laughs> His jawline visibility is superb, but his lower third is narrow. His cheekbones are low set and not very prominent. A decent mouth to nose proportion, bad lip proportions, and an okay face shape. Cole has good skin complexion. The facial hair- No, they seem gay. They're incredibly gay. <laughs> They're spiritually devoid. Hair of a prepubescent boy. Good hairline with great hair texture and messed up teeth with a goofy smile. Cole has an okay jaw forward growth with a short ramus. His mid face is slightly long. Chad, is it over for him? <laughs> and his FWHR is outside of the ideal range. Cole is a three out of 10 facially with a 99% facial harmony. Numbers, 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 obsess over looks. This goofy ah dude just needs to start the video already. Let's get into that it. was what a typical looks maxing face rating sounds like. If you aren't fortunate enough to have access to an AI text-to-speech service that makes it seem like someone else rated your face so you can prove to your friends that you're not actually ugly, you'll be happy to know that these types of services are offered on web- Fun fact, I don't know if you guys were here for the stream, but I bought a face rating as a joke using the Filion Live Mog face. And it fucking passed the vibe test. And I got rated like an 8.5. <laughs> I tried to find the email associated with it. I'm pretty sure the name was Richard Head Looksmaxing at gmail.com, but I couldn't gain access to the account and get the rating because I wanted to turn it into a video. But I was literally trolling because the name Richard Head is Dickhead. <laughs> so Dickhead looks maxing. <laughs> I gotta find it. I gotta find it now. But yeah, I got face rated by Wheat Waffles, who's a black pill YouTuber who gave up making content. Websites run by content creators. Look at that. Only $64 for a face rating analysis. Did I not use my real face because I was scared of scoring low? No, I used the fake face to prove that it's fucking nonsense. And the fact that my profile picture passed <laughs> is a testament to how dumb some of these people are. This looks maxing and chatification. The goal? To mog as many people as possible. Or in other words, appear as physically attractive as you can. Mog comes from a mog or alpha male of the group, by the way. And when comparing yourself to others, how did we get here? The global beauty industry market size is around $600 billion and is only estimated to grow in the coming decades. The measures now being taken to live as long as possible and look as youthful as you can are frightening. And to me, all of this signals one thing. Looks matter now more than ever. So let's dive into the understandable but often depressing world of looks maxing and how this trend might negatively impact the future of society. It's insane to me that the Giga Chad face is the epitome of beauty for a man. It looks like you just maxed all the sliders in an RPG video game. <laughs> like that is the golden standard. I don't understand how there's no other... There's no other basis to go off of. It's how Giga Chad do you look? If the intro left things a little ambiguous for you, allow me to give you a formal definition. Looks maxing is the process of improving one's physical appearance as much as possible through various methods, ranging from minor things like skincare all the way to in Yeah, the handsome Squidward look. <laughs> that's it. That's all that's all they're attracted to. Hence cosmetic And what's funny is these face ratings are done through the male gaze, which makes it actually gay. Like, other men are telling you how hot you are. <laughs> huh? 
surgery. Now, the maxing part of looks maxing has turned into more of a meme than anything, spawning terms like money maxing, jelk maxing, or my personal favorite, dinner maxing. And because a lot of people first hear of looks maxing from memes like this, they don't take it seriously and usually just see it as a joke. But for some young people on the internet, looks maxing is the difference between continuing to live on and pulling the plug on yourself, otherwise known as rope maxing. And this is where looks maxing can turn very, very dark. Thanks to the internet, it's becoming all- I thought rope maxing was just blasting ropes. <laughs> Like shooting loads, busting fat nuts. All the more apparent of these two undeniable facts. Looks matter, and pretty privilege exists. Quove Studio, a popular YouTube channel dedicated to studying physical attractiveness through anthropology and cognitive psychology, has gone over many different studies that prove just how much these statements are true. One, Hamer Meshed al found that attractive individuals tend to earn 3-4% to more than their less attractive counterparts, a phenomenon known as the beauty premium. It's just like... Go outside and get some bitches. Get your money up. Get your bag up. Learn to money, Max. <laughs> I don't understand this fascination. In economics. Two, in politics, attractive candidates typically receive 20% more votes than less attractive opponents. Three, attractive people are more likely to be perceived as intelligent. Glasses pushing, pushing fucking soy face. Soy voice. Uh, well, actually, um, uh, studies show that uh, uh, men with a um, positive cantle tilt uh, get mm, get more pussy than you will ever. So, um, like, shut the fuck up. You should be thrown into a locker or hung on a flagpole by your underwear. Even when there's no correlation between appearance and actual intelligence. Well, Ruffle and colleagues have shown... They, were, they have a study for everything? Yeah, a study show, a study show. Studies show you're cringe. And that unattractive criminals go to jail for twice as long as attractive criminals. Five, in one study, 72% of hiring managers admitted This is all just gobbledygook, bro. It's verbal diarrhea. None of this means anything. Candidates' appearance influence the decision, and one in five employers admit to rejecting job candidates based solely on their appearance. Well, did you look at the studies? Did you look at the studies? Did you, uh, can I see a source on that? <laughs> Peak Redditor behavior, bro. <laughs> Although this wasn't explained in the short, I think the evolutionary incentive to giving attractive people more attention and advantages is intuitively understood. Many of us inherently perceive attractive people in a higher regard without even realizing it, probably due to the fact that our most primal parts of the brain, which are mainly focused on survival, see physically well-rounded people as being better suited to increasing the chances of the human species carrying on. And so, attract- uh <laughs> Only hot people can breed. Attractive people naturally get better job opportunities, get perceived as smarter, and have much greater success with dating and reproducing because it's basically giving our species the best- I don't know, ugly people be fucking. Have you seen those couples on TikTok and Instagram? They're just perpetually horny. And they're like twos and threes. Like rabbits, bro. Insane. Putting up crazy numbers best chance of surviving and becoming more upgraded and well-equipped, if you will. Yeah, it's a messed up way to think about it, but it plays out a lot in our everyday lives. If you're someone who's had a glow up in the recent years from the time you were a kid to an adult, I'm sure you can attest to the feelings of pretty privilege more than the people who were born with it. I remember before I started going to the gym and my body fat was a bit higher, the amount of it- What I understand about these before and afters is that like, shout out Cole, this is a young picture of himself. You're like a child here. You're not supposed to look like Henry Cavill. Attention. It's not a glow up. Like uh, you're just developing. Now you could argue that part of that was due to the fact that I was just an awkward little kid and I hadn't gone through puberty yet, and I'm sure that plays a small role in it. But plays a major role in it. But once I started to build muscle <gasps> and fill out my frame, oh, he's mogging us. Damn. I noticed how much more people respected me, listened to me, and took me seriously. So what exactly makes someone attractive? Well, according to Looks Maxers, actually this isn't just according to Looks Maxers, it's proven by science. These are the most important facial characteristics. Third eye, that's it. If you don't have the third eye, it's over for you. And a Norwood. 
Symmetry, meaning both the left and right side of the face look as close to the same. That's 100% with a pump, by the way. <laughs> that is not a flaccid physique as each other. Clear skin free from as much acne and wrinkles as possible, though there are probably some exceptions to men being perceived as more attractive when they have a bit of wrinklage on their face. Nasal width and height, and this too can have a lot of variability in what is perceived as attractive. I got some pretty narrow nostrils. Mm. And my nose is a perfect bridge for my glasses. But alas, I look like a Roman conqueror. I don't make the rules. Active. Proportionate facial thirds, which basically means your face isn't too long, too short, too narrow, or too wide. Having positive canthal tilt, which is the angle of your eyes and eyebrows. And having thick eyebrows and lashes also helps, especially for women. And last and probably most important, having a prominent, sharp, chiseled jawline. I don't know, dude. Some of these jawlines are too sharp. There's such thing as being too handsome. <laughs> I'm serious. Some Gen Alpha kids, Zoomers, are like, no, no, there's not. I have studies to back it up. No, th there is. You look uncanny. You look stupid. You look dumb. And good proportions all around that area. Now, here's where things get a little disturbing, because we're going to talk about the lengths in which some people will go to bone smashing achieve this type of look. But first I need to talk about money maxing and I'm going to talk max my way into sponsor maxing. Hey, let's sponsor go. Sponsor of this video, Skillshare. Oh, shout pretty out Cole. To, pretty privileged. Hitting us with a Philion like segue. I see you. Something else you might experience as you grow older is how much more people respect you when you develop a competent, useful skill set that generates you a full-time income. I know a lot of you guys don't want to work a soulless corporate job for the rest of your life. Yeah, you, you could to say that again. By boomers that you're lazy when they bought their houses for a pile of berries. So if you're in that sort of situation, then Skillshare can really help. Skillshare is the largest online learning community for creatives with thousands of classes in a bunch of different- Chat, he's getting his bag. I, I, have, to, I have to let him do so, okay? Different creative categories. If you aren't sure where to start, Skillshare now has learning paths which consist of hand-picked classes meant to be taken in order. Personally, if I were to start my YouTube channel again, which is now my full-time job, I would have loved a learning path like Discover DaVinci Resolve for video and sound editing. DaVinci Resolve right now is one of, if not the best video editing platform, and learning this skill is incredibly- Everyone does use DaVinci Resolve, bro. Kinda cringe. Me? Final Cut Pro till I die lucrative if you want to be a content creator or edit videos for someone else. But if video editing isn't your thing, there's thousands of other classes you can take led by industry pros across film, illustration, design, freelance, productivity, and much more. So if you're interested in deepening your skills in things that will make the ever looming problem of inflation a little less daunting and pursuing fulfilling creative work, then you can click the first link in my description which will allow you to join Skillshare. And they're doing a little deal for you guys. No the way. First 500 people to click that <laughs> link will get a one month free trial Crazy. to Skillshare. So definitely join that as soon as you can. Now there are two types of looks maxing I'm currently- Back to eugenics maxing. Currently aware of. Soft maxing and hard maxing. Get the fuck out of here. I didn't even know this. <laughs> Soft maxing and hard maxing. Can I hard max my soft cock? Soft maxing is usually associated with very common popular beauty trends that are simple lifestyle changes. These are things like makeup, upgrading your fashion style, going on a diet, working out, changing your hairstyle, and starting a skincare routine. Nothing about soft maxing is very controversial, and in fact, it's really quite useful to do most, if not all of these things, to not just improve your perceived- This is what I hate about this peak 4chan Reddit Redification of terminology. Not everything needs a quirky term to describe it. Like brushing your teeth and taking care of your hair and showering and working out doesn't need to be grouped together and called soft maxing attractiveness, but also your general well-being. But then there's hard maxing. 
These are the permanent changes to your body or face by changing your bones or flesh in some way. Not only are these the types of treatments we're all now aware of, like lip fillers, teeth whitening slash straightening, Botox, BBLs, or hair transplants, plants. There are also some really dangerous, extreme, and frankly ineffective forms of trying to change your physiology. Jelking, the <laughs> Jelking, please enlighten us. Act of stretching one's private part in an effort to make it grow is now a thing that some men What's the opposite of jelking? Smushing? I need to reduce my wiener. Genuinely do to increase the size of their cucumber. Again, this is one of those looks maxing memes that is usually just used as a joke, but on some corners of the internet there are men actually doing this thinking it's going to change the shape or size of their private parts. We're now seeing men get limb lengthening surgery to add a few inches to their heights. This shit is sad. <laughs> they go to like Russia and break their kneecaps and shin bones and then crank them mechanically with like a rusty lever just so they could be 6'5 and still paraplegic <laughs> but permanently ruin their mobility and joints another disturbing hard maxing trend is the concept of bone smashing which is just as bad as it sounds it's the practice of hitting your face with a hammer or other blunt objects in order to damage your bones so they regrow stronger the only reason some people believe this even actually works which it doesn't is something called wolf's law um uh, do you have a source for that chat does he have a source for that I've been bone smashing for nine years now, and I could say my, uh, my, uh, mandible has certainly gotten more triangular. Yeah. Wolf's Law is based on the observation that you and your bones are not like a Ken doll, rather than being- uh, cita citations, please? Uh, source police? In completely inanimate structures, your bones are constantly <laughs> undergoing remodeling with older damaged bone, continuously being reabsorbed and replaced by newly laid bone. All of this is the result of the gamification of the human experience. If your numbers don't add up, then you're not good enough. It's sick. That is 100% correct. What a valuable insight from a member of the Filion Live community. Applying mechanical force or physical stress to your- Bro, what do we need to prove it? Bones can actually increase the rate that such remodeling occurs and, in the process, result in stronger, thicker bones. While this is actually true of things like resistance training, which has been scientifically proven to improve bone density, consistently bashing your face in with a hammer has absolutely zero evidence to support it working. Other potentially dangerous forms of hard maxing include taking steroids, removing ribs for a more sculpted waist, starve maxing. Back in my day. The only, the only person who was removing ribs was Marilyn Manson so he could suck his own dick. Do you guys remember that urban legend? Which encourages extreme dieting and eating disorders, and even white maxing, which, as the name suggests, is using certain creams to appear more white. Because according to many heavy black billed looks maxers, white people are objectively better looking than any other race. But perhaps the most famous trend of trying- Dude. <laughs> I remember I made a video on this guy, and there was some weird circumstances around me posting the video. From what I remember, like, I, I, I couldn't tell if this guy was using a filter. I, I was like 100% sure he was. But I got an email claiming that he has, like, low self-esteem and wants all the videos of him taken down because he's too handsome. His jaw is too strong. It, like, gave him PTSD. I just, I, I just ignored it. I was like, huh? I don't know if you're trying to pull my fucking chain right now. To change your facial structure permanently right now is mewing. <laughs> and because it's so popular. Dude, I was on this shit six years ago. Of course the internet now catches up. I want to spend a little bit more time digging deeper into it. Unless you have an attention span over 10 seconds, you've probably heard of mewing before. It's the act of placing your tongue on the roof of your mouth in order to change the development of your jawline. There appears to be no real solid scientific evidence that mewing works. Um, do you have a source for that? Uh, source police. <laughs> Pulling you over. Dude, that guy's got my nose. <laughs> 
tired eyes, crooked nose, set back jaw. Dude, is that me? Later down the line in your life. But what has been proven is that tongue posture and nasal breathing is really important for facial development in the earlier stages of your life. Studies have shown that mouth breathers from a young age have much less jawline development than their nasal breathing counterparts. And nasal breathing is also important for other bodily functions such as improving circulating blood oxygen, lowering blood- I didn't know this was a thing. Like I thought the default way to breathe was through your nose. So I just figured everyone is a nose breather. So when there was a bunch of hoopla about like, oh, bro, are you are you a mouth breather? Oh, no, what, what you have to do is actually breathe through your nose. I was like, huh? What, what do you mean? Oh, science, science shows that breathing through your nose is actually, a, you know, 10 times more efficient. You get more oxygen and it, it grows your jawline. I thought everyone just breathed through their nose pressure and might even lead to a decreased risk of cardiovascular disease. Although when you're in heavy exercise, it's okay to breathe through your mouth. It seems like hardcore looks maxers took this information and exaggerated it to make it seem that the act of mewing will completely change your facial structure at any age. But once you get into your late teens, you probably won't see much if any of a facial difference from mewing all the time. I breathe through my ass. If anything, you should just have the correct tongue posture and breathe through your nose for the other benefits that I mentioned. You know what's really going to change? If you have to think about your tongue posture, it's so unbelievably over for you. Is the look of your jawline, lowering your body fat percentage, and eating a good whole foods diet. So you can stop chewing that mastic gum that claims... It's growing your jaw muscles and it's going to change the way your jaw looks. And you can stop clenching your jaw at every second of the day. Not Hey, what's up guys? Derek from More Plates, More Dates here. <laughs> yeah, that is him. <laughs> you can stop chewing that mastic gum that claims it's growing your jaw muscles and it's going to change the way your jaw looks. And you can stop clenching your jaw at every second of the day, not breaking your mewing. I'm pretty sure I've been told that I have a deviated septum, but I've been doing pretty intense cardio workouts and I typically just breathe through my nose like a deviated septum I, I don't know maybe maybe it depends on the severity of it being streak going like because uh yeah it's probably not going to do anything especially if you're an adult it's easy to look at all this and say to yourself what the hell is wrong with these people? But before you decide to put all the blame on Luxmaxer's insecurities and own decisions, I think you really need to immerse yourself into their world. And what better way to do that than to venture over to the Luxmaxing forum, Luxmax.org. Aesthetics matter. <laughs> Oh my god. By the way, I just want to give a quick thanks to Kidology and her video on Luxmaxing for making me aware of this website. <laughs> Uh, I'll keep my comments to myself. On the forum, you can start discussions in the categories of looks maxing, money making, and even get ratings from other members. Now, when I first peered into this form and started- Kidology? That's just not- That's- That name is- Horrific. Started scrolling. I felt like an old person trying to understand Gen Z slang on social media. Like this post titled, Hard Maxing for Muslim Cells. I'm a- Muslim cell, so I can't get any surgeries, but fillers, injections, and pretty much anything other than a surgery is allowed. What procedures do you recommend for hard maxing without surgery? At the moment, I'm thinking MSC for jaw, veneers, cheeks filler, lip filler, Kybella injection to burn face fat, maybe zygos filler. One I'm a Muslim cell, holy shit, that got me. One of the members responded by saying, either cope with your R slur ass religion and pull some bitches in heaven or <laughs> hard max and send IRL, your choice. <laughs> Another member responded, doesn't matter, there are plenty of muzzy h that get those things and more. Rhino, BBL, lipo, breast implants, etc. You think they care? Hoflation is real, so do what you have to do to oh even the playing field. God. Rules don't matter anymore, just winning does. 
Some other posts that reveal the theme of LooksMax.org are Should I Lie to Get on Accutane? How to Chew Max Without Looking Like a Bloated Chipmunk? Will I Inherit My Father's Zygomatic Lateral Growth? And last but certainly- What the fuck is Zygomatic Lateral Growth? Certainly not least, the ultimate penis size encyclopedia, the final pill, the truth revealed. But what might be the- Try not to be gay challenge impossible most emotionally jarring category of them all rate me is rate me please 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 give me a rating please what am i out of 10 please i need to know the ratings on this subthread, you can share photos of yourself and get ratings from other members, offer advice to improve, and what category of attractiveness you fit in. Some posts appear to be quite calm and civil in the replies, like this one. Rate me and share some advice slash tips. Low slash HTN, which translates to high tier normie. This is basically a looks maxer's way of saying that you're slightly above average looking. Normie, low tier normie could- <laughs> Chat. I want to unironically start using these. Oh my god. Be mid-tier normie at best. Strong low-tier normie looks reminiscent of Andrew Tate. But other posts are not as lucky, such as this one by a 17-year-old asking for a side face rating. Just rope at this point, the first comment says, meaning the person should unalive themselves. While the user later indicates they were joking, it isn't uncommon for users to give direct insults, telling people to unalive themselves instead of giving constructive- Yeah, because there's nothing you can do, it's so over. ...constructive criticism. And as a young teenager on these forums, you can only imagine what that is doing to their mental health. I also often discover- Yeah, I'm an HTC, a high tier chat. I've heard a lot of users posting their photos to get rated that were very clearly edited using a filter or face morphing app, which signals to me that they're afraid of what these forms would say if they showed their true faces and are ashamed of what they really look like. But the strangest thing I found amongst all the racism, hate, and negativity was the fact that a lot of these users appear to be self-aware enough to the point where they know that spending time on this form is not good for them. You look above average for your age and race and you'll look- Dude, look at that filter on that guy's face. You look scary. Look way better at 18 when you fully develop. Just don't starve yourself and stop wasting your time on shitty forms on the internet. Go out with friends in the park, study, read non-academic books, sit with parents. Dude, 14 years old is too young. Don't fall into this crap at this young age. I regret it. Get out while you can. myself. When you really understand what's going on here, you have to have some sympathy for these guys. Like imagine you're a young, impressionable teen with no father figure or parental role model who has unlimited access to the internet. You often get ridiculed or bullied for your looks. Then you discover the world of looks maxing and the potential of mogging, attracting the opposite sex and getting more respect starts to become a possibility. Chat, is this a skill issue? Where's the stem from? So you consume endlessly trying all these different beauty hacks or solutions, obsessing over the way you look until eventually you reach a form like this and get advice. And even though you know- <laughs> You guys just say yes. <laughs> Truly it's a brain issue. That, that, that's a fact. Deep down, none of this shit is really good for you. You just can't stop because you are so unsatisfied with yourself. Your insecurities are being fed on Pope. with each new post you consume. For people like this, it's- I would have gotten beaten if I did this shit. Yeah, literally. <laughs> I would have been clowned on. It's really not just as simple as saying, oh, just stop caring about it and take care of yourself and be confident, bro. These people feel like if they're not engaged in this world and they're not doing this constantly, constantly trying to improve their looks, then there will be little to no reason to live. Because in a world that values external appearances and beauty over everything, then you need to do this in order to survive. And I'm sure if you're a woman, you- Is that the lucky guy? You know what I'm talking about? Thing, then you need to do this in order to survive. Is this lucky blue? Is, is this the model that is married to that trad wife on TikTok? You guys know who I'm talking about? God, what's her name? The one that, that, that cooks everything from scratch yes you know who i'm talking about i can't believe i forgot her name nara smith dude i'm pretty sure this is nara smith's man 
And I'm sure if you're a woman, you can heavily relate to this too. While most of men's value from society is derived from our usefulness and competency, for women, most of their- Yes, his name is Lucky Blue, and <laughs> he walks around with a toothpick and thinks that he's him. Their value in society is derived from their beauty. Although those narratives are changing a bit now, it's very clear that beauty standards are becoming increasingly more unrealistic. We're in an era of mass beauty inflation, where we're constantly being bombarded with images of people with edited faces and filters to make them look- Chat, he's gooning! Cole, why are you gooning? Way more attractive than they actually are in real life, which then, in turn, leads all of us to increase our standards. And this is something I briefly touched upon in my Gender Wars video, which is the fact that what was once considered beautiful for the average person is now just really average, especially for those deep into looks maxing. All these enhancements and pills uh, <laughs> and supplements to change our physique and cut corners to get fit or more curvy without little to any work makes people with really great physiques and faces feel like they're terribly below. I respect Sam Sulek, by the way, just using this video as an example. <laughs> Why are you glazing another man? Kinda sus. Low average. Body dysmorphia is rampant in looks maxing and fitness communities because you're constantly seeing these photos and videos of these influencers and their uh, one David Late, oh my gosh! Idealized perfect version of them that doesn't even actually exist in real life. That state of them doesn't even really exist. Great example of this is just how much I can change the way my physique looks in photos. In this first picture, this is right after I had a workout, it's in- Ah, we called it! <laughs> we knew that that was a pump. Good lighting, I have a pump, and I'm flexing really hard. <laughs> and in the second photo, it's just me as I look in everyday life in not so great lighting. Look, I don't think we're ever gonna live in a world where pretty privilege is completely eradicated and young people of any gender don't feel insecure about their looks, but we have to start asking ourselves how ethical these extreme portrayals of beauty are. For a while, certain face filters were- They're extremely ethical, what do you mean? They're based in truth-pilled banned on Instagram in the state of Texas, and honestly, I think that's not a bad first approach to increasing the friction between- If you ever ban my GigaChad face filter, I'm fighting you. ...between us and posting things that aren't an accurate depiction of what we actually look like. We really need to set restrictions on these things that are so detached from the real world and have more creators show the vulnerable, real sides of themselves, even if that results in a lot of hate and criticism from people who think you need to fit in with the conventional standards of beauty. And the more that you step away from this stuff, the more you start to realize how much variation there is within the population. So the cure to looks maxing is life maxing? For what could be considered attractive or beautiful. Even if you do real scientifically backed research on this stuff, like the types of videos Quo Studio has made, you'll find out that even the science states there's a lot of variations amongst good looking faces. All of these perfect jaw angles and proportions and fucking canthal tilts with your eyebrows could not possibly take into account every single thing that makes a person a tra- Oh, he's wholesome maxing chat? ...active and respective, and it's such a superficial way to go about things. Wrong. Do these things usually talked about matter when determining if someone is objectively good so looking? So- Yes, of course, but having to so fit one based. singular standard he's of beauty and obsessing over it to the point where you take measures as extreme as people in the looks maxing community do is totally unnecessary and will only lead you to self-hate and harm. And I'm not saying you should not strive to take care of yourself and improve your attractiveness. When you start sleeping seven to nine hours a night and take care of your skin and eat well, lose body fat up to a certain point and get a haircut that fits your face, you absolutely will start being treated better. I can even side with this comment of this dude who spent $4,000 on a hair transplant and had women start flirting with him and people respecting him more. I looks maxed a few months ago, was balding since I was 17, was invisible to women for years. Last year at age 24, fixed my, fixed my hair via a transplant. Bro went to Turkey. My hair grew back in a few months and people started acting much nicer towards me. Women even started flirting. And yeah, honestly, best 4K I've spent. Chat, why can't I read sometimes? Or because of it. That's amazing. And... Good for him for pursuing that. Why do I not? I just don't believe you. Like, I don't think that happened. <laughs> I think that is a bot comment. Dead internet theory. 
There is not a human typing that. And if there is, it's a federal operative. But like most things, it becomes a yeah, problem. Yeah, 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 hold on a second. Haircut doesn't fit your face? Good. You're ugly? Good. Uh, I mean, Jocko Willink is just right about everything. All you have to do is just look at yourself in the mirror and say, good. Problem when you take it to the extreme. When you try to rigorously change what you cannot control, worry about whether you have hunter eyes or prey eyes. You're a Muslim cell? Good. <laughs> if you're mewing enough, chewing enough mastic gum, and if your nose is too big or too small, you never accept yourself and obsess over your looks as much as someone with an eating disorder obsesses over how much food they put into their body. At that point, no matter how much- He could have chosen to shave and go bald instead of staying balding or spending 4k on new hair, but it's a bit scary, I guess. Yep. Should have shaved it. Should have became aerodynamic. To improve, it will never be enough. And that's when looks maxing techniques can become extremely harmful and more damaging to your health than if you never heard about them in the first place. If we want to stop placing so much emphasis on looks and redirect more of our attention to all the other things that make human life beautiful, we really need to start being more conscious about what we decide to share on the internet. Of course, everyone should be free to post themselves during the times where they look the most pleasing or feel the most attractive, but without all the edits and the filters and the Photoshop and the judgment. I have a friend <laughs> who only posts on his story with the Giga Chat filter face. <laughs> and it's like a new version, so it, it, it looks pretty hyper-realistic. It's fucking hilarious, to be honest. I, I, I say we should enforce these beauty standards even more. I think we should step on the gas. I think we should become beauty accelerationists. I think we should all bone smash and rope max till we are all a homogenous giga species. For people who aren't even bad looking to begin with. And the ironic part is, once you stop obsessing over your looks and you spend more of your time developing other skills and areas of your life, you'll become more confident, develop a greater resistance to needing to live up to an unrealistic beauty standard, and you'll start to surround yourself with more real down-to-earth people who aren't so hung up on their outward appearance. My honest opinion for most of you watching this, especially if you're young, is that you look much better than you think you do right now. Thanks.